But I have spent a lifetime trying to bring together, as you know, the grassroots, the power thereof, bring it to Washington, and find people who will care and listen. We have amongst us now, we've been talking about Rachel Carson all day long. Well, guess what? Senator Tom Udall is going to channel Rachel Carson for us. <clears throat> You remember Hillary doing the thing with Eleanor Roosevelt? I, I digress, yeah. In all seriousness, Senator, what we've been talking about is Rachel's uncanny, unbelievable ability to feel and understand and relate and have a sense of wonder and awe and imagination for every little creature, no matter how small, through people affected by DDT, chemicals, climate change, even the hogs, we talked a lot about CAFOs. But we also tried to emphasize that with her sense of wonder, her imagination, her writing, that Rachel Carson was also a quite political being. That she had the opportunity, after she suffered, as we heard earlier, Senator, through the defeats of Adlai Stevenson twice, while nuclear weapons were being tested in the open atmosphere, while rivers were burning, while chemicals were being sprayed, she lost and she lost and she lost. And she kept on going. And she worked and she studied and she wrote and she connected up environmental groups and scientists and people in the government so that finally, best-selling author that she was, that when Silent Spring came out, President John F. Kennedy was at one of his witty, wonderful press conferences in Bibliot. Mr. President, Mr. President, we're hearing a lot about pesticides. Are you going to be doing something about that? He said, well, uh, you must be talking about Ms. Carson's book. And uh, I've read that, and uh, we're going to have a task force to look into that. Well, that task force and all of that happened to be headed by the Secretary of the Interior, one Udall, who, as you can quickly figure out, because you're smart people, is the father of Senator Tom Udall. We've been talking about legacies, about carrying the torch, about continuing the struggle that Rachel began and we are carrying forward. So for me, it is an incredible honor to introduce Senator Tom Udall for two reasons. Rachel cared about pesticides. Tosca had been broken for how long? And when Senator Udall started to reform it, people on the, I would fare to say, left and right, said, oh, what are you doing talking to that Vitter guy? And it's not strong enough, and it's crazy. Criticism from all sides, but I know he cared deeply and personally about it. And so he moved and worked and ultimately convinced a whole set of people on both sides of the aisle to reform Tosca. That story isn't over, it continues. But also because Tom remembered Rachel when he was a young man, and, um, well don't tell the bad stories about Rachel like when she came to Bobby Kennedy's and was at, no, no. <laughs> um, it is an honor to have someone who literally carries on the legacy that Rachel gave us through Stuart Udall, through the EPA, through chemical reform, and who cares so deeply and continues. We are now in fairly difficult, dark times. But if there's anyone who can bring us some hope, it is Senator Tom Udall. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Bob, thank, thank you. Uh, so much for that really, really generous introduction. And just thank you so much for the work you do with the Rachel Carson Council. You, you've been amazing. And, and uh, his book, I love his book, Rachel and Our Sisters. Uh, and uh, just thank you, really, from my, from my heart. You know, we, we have been through this election. And I, I just have to, at the beginning, uh, tell you one one story here, they, there was a, uh, an election back, you talk, I'm reminded because of Adlai Stevenson. And Stevenson was our most intellectual 
uh, candidate for president of the United States and ran twice, and so everybody knew that. I, I knew that as a kid because my parents were so involved, and he, he gave one of these great speeches uh, at a university. I think it was on banning the bomb, and after he finished his speech, he was coming across the stage and coming down, and, and he was grabbed by the sleeve, and somebody's tugging his sleeve and said, you should have the vote of every thinking man and woman in America. He says, yes, ma'am, it's not enough. I need a majority. <laughs> and, and, I, and I think, I think, I think it's the way that's some, how we feel now, isn't it? I think we feel a little bit like that now as thinking persons and approaching the issues and seeing this play out and, and I just wanted to start and thank not only Bob, but the, the council, the work that the council does. I know uh, Sandra uh, talked to you today. The council does work on climate change, working for food sustainability uh, and healthy communities, and continuing Rachel Carson's legacy. And that is, that is tremendously important, this legacy. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what Bob uh, talked on the part of her legacy of chemicals and pesticides and herb herbicides at the very end because I need your help to continue that Rachel Carson legacy in that area. And I looked at your, your conference schedule here today and he just told me in front of you that you know, you've been talking about her all day. Uh, and so rather than, uh, and you've heard a lot, I'm, I'm going to be much more personal because my father and my family uh, really knew Rachel Carson, and she was a part of my life uh, as, as a teenager uh, growing up here in Washington. And first of all, what a wonderful person. Uh, what an impact she had. What a legacy she has. And um, she inspired me. I can tell you, I've been here in Washington since uh, 1999. I was state attorney general before that, and in all my public service. She's inspired me uh, to do the right thing in terms of the environment. And so I just want to congratulate the council on your 75th anniversary of her, her early book. And um, I'm not going to repeat what, what, um, what others have said, but as I said, just kind of give you a, a personal approach. And I, when I say I grew up with Rachel, I really mean it because I, I loved birds as a kid. Uh, I was a uh, uh, avid bird watcher. I had my parents, my mom. Held, we had bird feeders. I was I uh, I even uh, uh, raised homing pigeons at one point. You know the pigeons we'd take them. I had them, and we would take them 200 miles away and let them go, and they beat us home. And and so I just lo I I loved birds. And what I saw as a teenager. Uh, was Rachel talking about the impact of DDT on our ecosystems, and then what we learned from that also was DDT and its impact on falcons and eagles, uh, and the and the the, the fragile eggs. And so uh, you learn that, and you're appalled, and you say, you know, something has to be done. And Rachel Carson, I think, taught us all of us about the danger of chemicals, and she took on the chemical industry in a very, very strong way, and, and she, was, she was vilified for it. She was, uh, um, uh, she was accused of all sorts of things. I mean, they, 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 I can't even go through the list. It would go on for an hour. But she teaches us a couple of things that I think are very, very important. One is that good science matters, and we need to remember that in our battles today. Another is that determination matters. This was an incredibly determined woman. And then third is that vision matters. She looked out there and she saw what was going to happen in the future, and she committed herself to do that. Now, the personal part about my father uh, Stuart Udall, as Bob said, Secretary of the Interior in the 1960s, he was organizing a conference in the White House in the 1960s. It was a conference on conservation. 
And he met Rachel Carson at that conference. And they were natural allies. They became close friends. Um, and he really, in a very real sense, from all I can tell, all he's written, he's written about 13 books, he became her champion. He really adopted her in a way. And the first thing he did is, and, uh, is he invited her to what were called the Kennedy Seminars. This is at Bobby Kennedy's house where the Kennedy inner circle would meet for these really intimate meetings. And so to get into these seminars at Bobby Kennedy's house out there in McLean was a pretty special thing. And for her to get her uh, and to have an entree into them was very, very special. And it allowed her with the president's inner circle to convey in a very personal way what she felt and what she had written about in Silent Spring. And my father, after seeing that passion and after being her close friend, he decided he, you know, one of the things they, they do when you're in a presidential administration is the Secretary of Interior, he can maneuver around in the government to try to help out somebody like Rachel get her point of view across. And so my dad thought, well, the best thing to do is get the president's science advisor, Jerome Wiesner at the time, to take a look at Rachel Carson's Silent Spring book and what it said. And in fact, uh, they were given the task by President Kennedy, his science advisory committee, to evaluate si Silent Spring's validity. And the president's committee confirmed her science and vindicated her. So all of those attacks were put aside because the top scientists weighed in and said Rachel was right. And that work that Rachel did helped inspire us uh, in terms of the future of the newly born environmental movement. And many of you think that, that uh, you know, where did this modern environmental movement come from? And I was always fascinated like this, about this. My dad lived to be uh, 90 years old. Yeah, we just lost him, I think, about six years ago. And I saw in the last 10 years, he would give speeches and he'd move around the country, and people would come up and say, Stuart, we thank you, we thank you. You started the environmental movement. You are the modern environmental movement, not the conservation movement with, with the two uh, Roosevelts, but the modern environmental movement. And he would always say, my dad, it was amazing, he would always say, he would say, Rachel Carson played a tremendous role. And then he would say, she started the movement with Silent Spring. And to me, that says it all, because my dad was always, he, he was always truthful about uh, his career, and he was always, you know, right on point when it came to the truth. So enough of the, the personal part. I want to just talk to you a little bit about the, the, uh, the chemical part of this because it's appalling to think that we laid all the groundwork and we haven't done anything on chemicals until this year. The states have done some things, but the federal government. And let me tell you about that. Fast forward the 1960s. Uh, Rachel Carson's work on chemicals and chemical risk and she laid the groundwork. You know of all the environmental laws that passed in the 60s, Clean Air, Clean Water, Clean Water Drinking Act. In 1976, this is one of the later laws that passed, it was called the Toxic Substances Control Act, TOSCA. And TOSCA was put in place for to, to protect the environment and to protect human health from chemicals, from toxic chemicals. But it got tangled in legislation very early on and as the legislation moved up, in 1991, the, the, the EPA, our, our public health agency that's out there, was the enforcer of TOSCA. And they, how this got in legislation is they picked uh, a ban on asbestos. You all know asbestos, a known carcinogen. And so they stepped in and said, we're going to ban it. Well, it went to court and in 1991, wound its way up, got it in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. They struck down EPA's 
asbestos ban, imposing an impossibly high legal standard, and Tosca, for all intents and purposes, was dead, 1991. They never regulated another chemical after that. Chemicals were flowing out to the tune of 750 to 1,500 a year, and they didn't have the ability because of this legal ruling. And so no chemical regu regulation, basically, because they'd only done five chemicals before this ruling came in place. So from Rachel Carson all the way to this year, a lack of federal effort. We had some states moving, but no national effort with the EPA, which really has the agency that can function and, and deal with these issues. And there's somebody here with the EPA. That I was telling him how proud I was uh, of the agency. Well, what happened? Frank Lautenberg, many of you may know him, great champion on chemicals, fought uh, the, the smoking on planes. Uh, uh, Frank Lautenberg pulled people together. There was a big division. And he pulled 12 senators, a, a 12 Democrats and 12 Republicans together, and he got a bipartisan bill, and the New York Times or endorsed it early on, and six weeks after he put that in, he died. Really unfortunate. I just love the guy. I was on the committee, and so I said, I'm going to pick up this bill in Frank's name, and we're going to get this done. And it was... I just want to tell you, it was one of all the years, you know, when I started public service and, and the fights I've been in, it was one of the toughest fights of, of my political career. I mean, people trashed me from all sides. I mean, we had infighting within our party. Uh, Jonathan Black, who's right back here, the, he was my assistant. You know, he was like six foot six before we started. <laughs> but. He, he, and he was, in the, me and, and the staff, he worked on this. This was really, really tough. It took us three years. This was three years ago. And we fought through the battles. And, but the key was keeping everybody at the table. We had absolutely, we had the chemical industry, we had the public health groups, we had the environmental groups, any stakeholder that you could think of. We brought them in and said, this is unacceptable. From Rachel Carson to today, we have no major chemical safety bill. And, and people realized that we had to do something. And, but it took, as I said, we'd been working for 10 years on bills and hadn't got anywhere. Three years ago, we started this. And I'm not going to belabor this, but, but um, this June of 2016, President Obama in the White House signed the Frank Lautenberg Chemical Safety Act of the 21st century. So this is, thank you. And this is, some, and Sheldon helped. You saw Sheldon White House here. There, there was a group of our great, uh, on the committee, uh, Jeff Merkley, um, uh, Cory Booker. I mean, we, we at critical points, we had what you would call liberal champions stand for, step forward and help us improve the bill. And we, I, I'll tell you, every time as it moved forward from committee to the floor to the House to the debates, we were always moving it and making a better bill. And I think if you all look into it, it's a really, really, really solid bill. But let me get to the final, the final part here, which is... Which is uh, Rachel Carson's legacy. You, you, that's what you all are about here. It's what the council's about. I mean, we need your help to continue this fight because this is just the start. What has happened here is we've put in place a major law. It's a law that now allows the EPA to do a job on chemical safety. But if we don't have people like you watching over and and pushing us forward and saying, let's, you know, you don't just enact a law and have things come out that are good. You need the forces that support these kinds of things to keep pushing and to monitor this. And so I'm asking you, one, to do that, and then to just finish on a note of optimism, because they, Bob asked me to do that. 
Uh, I've been thinking about it. I, he gave me this assignment a year ago. No, no, he said, he gave me this assignment two days after the election, and I, I, I almost didn't show up, Bob, because it was so. But, but seriously, just think for a minute, folks. Just think. The, the, the things that we have cared about, the things that we value, have been embodied in laws the most recent one I've told you about, but you know about all the others. And those are laws passed by Congress and signed by presidents. And I believe that those are very lasting. In my whole career, I've seen presidents come and go. And I'll tell you, the federal government and those laws are much bigger than one person. And so all of us just need to stay committed and caring and remember it's not just our fight, it's for our children and grandchildren. So thank you what you do. It's a real pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'll take two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take two, two seconds. All right. Keep it under control. All right, Jeff. Time for just a couple of questions for Senator Udall. Yeah, I'm happy to take two questions here. Jonathan's got me running off here, so Jonathan and Emma, and you by the way, day, you have a day Emma's, job. Emma's right back here, and she, um, she you were here a lot of the yes. day, and she told me uh, how great this conference was, and uh, she's, she's one of our hardworking fellows. Yes, please, go ahead. I just want to thank you for yeah. supporting yeah. Joppel and the veterans going out there. Yeah. Um, she, she'll be out there in two days. And yeah. Colleen's so, talking about Standing Rock and, and what's going on. Yeah, okay, so it's about, yeah. I, in, the, in the next Congress, Colleen, to tell you I'm going to be the top Democrat on the Indian Affairs Subcommittee. And so this has to, this has to do, I think this has to do, number one, with tribal relations, tribal sovereignty, the whole history of us breaking treaties. And it also has to do because many of the people that are there and, and have been there in the cold and have been sprayed by water and been mistreated are there because of climate change. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we're, we, we need to stand in solidarity with them. And so thank you for your, thank you for your work. And you, it's Sandra, right? Or Sandy? You heard from her today and her book and, and what she's working on. And I'm, you know... I'm impressed because one of the things in your council, Bob, talks about standing up on climate change, and that's what we need to do. So let's take one more there, and I, I want to let you get back to eating and drinking and feeling good. And Yeah, so please, go ahead. Well, boy, that's a... That's a it's a hard one to end on a positive note, but I'm going to, I'm going to, let, let me, uh, let me first of all uh, say that, that uh, on these appointments that we're going to give them scrutiny. I mean, the Senate, every person that, that is a Senate approved person is going to go up and have thorough hearings and everything from their background is going to be investigated. We're going to ask them questions. We're going to send them questions so that they can clarify. And so you're going to see a, a terribly, terribly full record at the end of all these hearings. And I hope you will weigh in with us after you see that. After you, you all weigh in all the ways you do in your social media and the, you know, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is, calling in radio stations because that we, by doing that, we will then once again frame what the issues are for people. And, and the Republicans probably on most of these folks have the votes to put some people in there. Uh, we'll have to see what comes out. But um, the fellow from EPA told me, he said, there's one name circulating out there that, that might be good. You know, I've heard of him. It's Bob Grady, right? Yeah. And so... You don't know yet. First of all, we should, we should remember and count our blessings, folks. For the next 60 days, we have President Obama as our president. Okay? Here, here. And, 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 
then we're going to be thorough. And, and I can tell you in administrations, if you go back far enough and you remember an EPA administrator by the na name of Ann Gorsuch, uh, you know, and you remember, I, I think she was chased out and I think she was maybe even prosecuted. I mean, you, you know, you, they're, they're, when you're dealing with the, the resources of the country and dealing with air and water and land, uh, these are pretty special to people. And so if you're just going to give it away to big corporations or whatever, uh, you're going to be in real trouble. And so we need to stay on the watch. We need all of you involved. And, and just remember, this isn't just our fight. It's our children's fight and our grandchildren's fight. Thank you very much. You all are terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.